Hello, hello. Please welcome to Lydia's Inspirational and Lifestyle channel. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification button so that every time we come live, then you'll be among the first person to be notified. Uh, this channel is, is about you and me and more looking inward and sharing our life stories that have changed the trajectory of our lives and has made us who we truly are. We'll be talking about our families, our lives, our careers, our, you know, some of the things that we have gone uh, through in our lives, like sicknesses and diseases and death, uh, you know, bringing up our children, and so on and so forth. So it's going to be quite exciting about the food that we eat. We'll be preparing food as we talk. Uh, we'll be sharing about, uh, you know, lifestyle and how to live healthy lives. Uh, but today, I would like us to continue on with a, with a session that I started on Facebook. And uh, so many people have reached out to me to do a video on, on my, about my life. Now, as I said, I was married to Mr. Gibson Mongai for 12 years, and uh, we were blessed with two children, Favor and Deborah. They are now teenagers. Uh, when he died, Deborah was seven and Favor was, was 10. Uh, and we lived happily like every other couple. I mean, my husband really loved his family. He was devoted. He was sold out. He was this man who who really, really took care of us and uh, who loved us truly. And other than that, he really loved God. He was sold out to, to God and, and serving God and, and helping other people to know God and to love God. Uh, but one day on the 12th of December, 2009, I received this call that changed, uh, you know, my life completely and my status completely to who I am today. Now, Gibson's death was just sudden and, ex and ex very unexpected. I didn't know that the same week on the 12th of December, uh, 2009, when we usually say, it's usually a, a holiday in Kenya, that I would receive news that my husband was no more. I do remember I was expecting him to return home in the evening to take me out for dinner. And, uh, and of course, as, 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 as a wife, I, I was really looking forward to that evening. But I do remember that he woke up uh, early in the morning and, uh, and he prayed and uh, then he called his, the driver, the, the person that he was going away with, uh, so that they could go out for, for work. When I asked him where he was going, he said uh, he was going for, for work and he would be back home in the evening uh, for us to go out for dinner. Uh, I, I, I know that I had this feeling, you know, the way you, you have a feeling like something is going to happen. And I almost ran, uh, you know, through the back door to tell him not to go. But then I said, this is a silly feeling. Why am I feeling this way? And I went back to sleep. And I, later in the day, I was woken up by my neighbor uh, who asked me to, you know, why are you still asleep? You should wake up. We go out for, you know, what we call nyamachoma in, in our country. And I told him, by the way, your friend is not here. He went out for work, but he will be back. He would be back and I requested him to take me out for, uh, you know, to do some little shopping for a small shop, a small business that I was running in another town. Now we went and on our, he, he said he, he wasn't ready to go. So I, I went to buy the things that I needed to buy, but he later called me. I don't know what happened. He later called me uh, that he would accompany me. And uh, on our way, I remember telling him, you know, that I have this bad feeling that something would happen. And of course, I had tried to call my husband and he wasn't picking his phone. His phone was, was going straight to voicemail. Uh, and I didn't understand why he hadn't even told me that he had arrived where he was going. And so I... I, I, we went and, uh, and we came back. He dropped me at some point and I, I proceeded to another, another, another place. Now on my way, I was called by my friends and they told me 
they had, um, you know, they, there's something that they wanted to talk to me about. Uh, and and uh, maybe take me out for dinner. And I told them I didn't want to go because uh, my husband was coming back home so that we could go out for dinner. But they insisted. So I waited in, in the city of Nairobi. And they came, they picked me up on our way. We chatted about, uh, you know, you know, about life, about uh, their daughter. And then we got to my best home's home. Uh, which, of course, I didn't know we were going there, but they told me on our way, please let's pass by and uh, we'll be quick. And I told them we better be quick because uh, I wanted to go back home. Uh, and and when we were there, I received a call from a police officer and he asked me who I was. Uh, I didn't want to, to say who I was. I asked him who he was and he said he was a police officer. And uh, he told me that my husband had passed away, involved in a road accident in the morning and uh, that we should meet in a city mortuary. And I asked him, oh, no, uh, of course I was in denial. I told him, please go to his wallet and get a, 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 um, his medical card and let's meet at the hospital in Nairobi hospital or current hospital but he insisted no let's meet at the mortuary and for once i knew maybe this is a bad dream or maybe he wasn't sure or he was confused so i and you know so i i did quite didn't know why i mean my man was okay in the morning how is then dead so the full the this so we we got into the house with my best man who was still holding me and i and i asked and he i told them you know this this person who has called me and he said uh, my husband was dead and and i asked them in swahili so and i thought they were confused and they told me no uh uh, no, uh, Pole, and I didn't know what this Pole was about, and they were not even telling me; they were just crying. So I called my my in-laws, I called my pastor, and I called everyone that I thought. Uh, now, of course, I I the following day it was time to go and identify his his body at the mortuary, and it was very very emotional for me to see his body at the mortuary. Very very emotional. Uh, a few other of a uh, few other relatives came and I kept asking them is it true have you seen him is it true that he is dead and uh, they, they of course they couldn't tell me that it is true that he was he was dead um, that that was the starting point of a very painful journey and the journey of me as a widow and I usually say that it is a journey that I wouldn't wish my father, my best enemy, you know, the people that you don't like. Yes, it is a painful journey. It is a journey that uh, where you have to acquire new status. You are a mother and a wife and a missus and people knew you as Mrs. So-and-so, you are a spouse, and now all of a sudden, you are a widow. You don't even know whether to call yourself a missus or, or what. You are no longer a wife. And that was the whole shift of, of my status. And in my next video, I'll talk about what happened uh, during the burial and and after the burial and how that changed the whole perspective of how i view and see life thank you so much for watching please watch out for my next video thank you bless you